some viewers may find the following video disturbing. Viewer discretion is advised. Moin. Hello, people of the interwebs. There's Jerry. Hello, Hi, Jerry. Oh, Crispin, how's life? Satan's anus, Tiffy is uh, uh, Rumbly A, Dan Lee, and Demon Sub, and yes, Rabbitack. Anus. Also, uh, Coffee Glory time. Hall, Glory Hall restaurant in the Netherlands. Hmm. And uh, Defective Dice, welcome. Red Letter Media. Okay. So I think, uh, obviously, this week has had very sad news at the start of us there with the passing of a, a great, great man. I'm, of course, talking about Rolf Harris. So I was going to lead us all on a uh, verse and chorus of the Court of King Cracticus, but then Bunny tells me he doesn't know it. So that's, that's that kind of ruined. Next time. <laughs> Next time. <laughs> Next time, Gadget. Next time. Sure. Yes, and what war? A lot of bottle war, no, but not today, not not war, from here. Boss. Go watch YouTube if boss, you want to see bot war. war. War, war, war. For Dead Man's Hand, Cowboy Gang, would Mammoth No Name be rifled filth? No, I don't think so. <laughs> I have the Mammoth No Name, and he comes with a uh, pistol, so he could be your shooter. Does he come on a horse with no name? No, he does uh, not come on a horse with no name. Uh, yeah, we, we, we lost the Punisher as well. But, you know, he never sung the Court of King Cracticus. So, yeah. Every Saturday is movie day. That's true. What are you doing with uh, Dead Man's Hand then? Or no go? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm guessing playing, maybe painting, battle reports, pictures, stuff. Uh, I'm curious now. Well, it's, actually, that's, that's the thing, because I automatically defaulted to the Clint Eastwood's I have which come from Knuckle Duster, but a couple of other companies do them. So it's so. Does he come with a? You played a demo and then bought too much. You cannot buy too much because they can be split into different gangs. <laughs> um, it's really good. In fact, I think me and Che might be looking to do so on camera. Does uh, the man with the name count as a named character? <laughs> nope. No, no name characters here, unless you name them yourself, in which case, yes, because you can name them all. Because um, you can quite happily go into a cowboy gang or into a... Um, outlaws. Outlaws or banditos or you can stick them in with, you know, wholesome law-abiding folks. Um, so, yeah. There's law-abiding folk in... It's going to make a plastic one. Oh, okay, mm. yeah. Okay. But, well, no, because now he, I'm trying to think, in The Good, The Bad and The Ugly, when he's blondie, he does start with a rifle, but he loses that and he's just pistol for the rest of it, mostly. So, five boxes of Gunslingers, uh, two of Gunslingers, two. Uh, there are ten per box, is that right? That just gives you plenty of options, I uh, means you can provide... Um, Townsfolk, because some scenarios will require townsfolk, and then uh, a gang to go up against. Yes, in the movie, he can't shoot the rope with his rifle when he's blondie. <laughs> Correct. Uh, he will get boxes as well. Oh, yeah, because then you can do uh, Chinaman on the old railroad. Another gang. Another gang, yeah. Nice. Skulls. Which one skulls for? Skulls? Is this 40k we're talking about? Skulls? Might be. Mm. I was looking at the possibility. I'm hoping um, Firelock bring out some engines at some point. I know they've got their native box, but their native box is more Mexican, Middle America natives. And, and not proper engines. So, hmm. the curse of the other seven. I haven't got the curse. I have got the magnificent seven themselves, though, to use them. Shay's already painted his fucking Ned Kelly gang. <laughs> Cheeky bastard. He, he, he's horrible like that. Yeah, weird demon. I don't know. Although he did come down one day to pick some stuff up. 
uh, and we'd set up a game of um, Dead Man's Hand, me and Boom, and, uh, and we had a train on it. It was like, look, Lloyd, train. D- mm. Didn't Lloyd mm. uh, get down with the uh, MDF train terrain at some point? I'm I, say yes. I think there was something from foreground. Oh, yeah. Back. Well, he took it home. Yeah. Hmm. Nick but, we've, but there's loads of other toy trains mm. that must be bought for scenery. But yeah, he comes out these days and everything. It's very good. It's only a mere 12 to 18 months from them going, you can now go out and see other people again. And he went, yeah, I'm not falling for that. So I should watch Boone Tomahawk. I have seen Boone Tomahawk, don't worry. Where that Tash deserves a starring role. So. Da, 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 da. Mm. Firelock did an interview re- recently, and it's unlikely that they will do another multi part plastic kit, mm. according to Defective Dice. It's a, lot of, it's a lot of cost for them. Good news, though, if they come out and see you cast. Because I've seen them. Um, I've seen some of their boats for the boat game, Oak and Iron, mm. cast, and, and they've turned out quite nice. So. Have they got uh, managed to get a decent mixture of plastics? Now I've got an idea for Back to the Future 3. Uh, oh, uh, it seems to be. Uh, you know you know, Dead Man's Hand sell Doc Brown and his DeLorean <laughs> covered in a tarpaulin? <laughs> For Dead Man's Hand. As, so as a can, terrain piece? As a terrain piece that you can stick in a barn. <laughs> That's great. To say. I, I love these little things in life. Speaking Just of little things, we, we're here to talk about other people's hobbies, aren't we? Yeah, yeah. We live vicariously through other people because then it saves us having to do any painting. Hmm. Soap Dojo, welcome. Oh my God, Soap remembered. I am, I am. It's a twister, it's a twister. Hi, Soap. So, first topic of the evening, Victorian science fiction by Mr. Denzian. Yeah, we've not been here in a little while, which unfortunately means he's gone out of hand. <laughs> um, so he's gone like, off oh, rails again. He's, he's gone off book. In many respects, I don't know if anybody ever pays attention to what we do. I can't imagine they would, because, I mean, why? Some must, because they actually come over to YouTube and, and leave a reply, so... I'm guessing somebody is actually old. All right. Well, that seems un- seems unlikely. However, um, normally we average about twelve projects a week. We've we've gone for three quarters of that this week because they're they're fucking beefy. They're hefty. There's a lot in them. They're very stodgy. It's like a high carb diet. <laughs> and again, I blame my ISP. Oh, I'm seeing only half the pictures and they're already glorious. Yeah, well, I'm seeing them all and they're smashing, so you know, don't worry. Um, you can skip the first one, obviously, because it's a double post. But then after that, you can just get straight on in there. So there's a whole rake of stuff um, from the not, not a face hugger. Um, which is a mind gripper for Stargrave, or at least that is the plan, to some what look like space cowboys. Kicking around the place there. Look at them just prospecting away, hoping that a mind gripper doesn't come and rape its face. The spide roos are particularly nice, and mixed in with the spide roos are cephalopod Martians, which I think are the ones from Bombshell. Uh, miniatures for Counterblast, the the I want to say they're called Eto, but then I also think that might be a terrorist group from Basque region. So, oh, oh look, holy shit balls! There, look, look at them load, look at them load. Fuck me, huh? Madness, madness, I say. Indeed, madness, uh, ma- maddening to say the least. I, I like the colourful. This isn't that spider holding a gun. Is that? Sp- yes, because it's an alien. It's not a spider, it's an alien that just happens to look a bit arachnid-like. That's also why it's got like a special space visor on. <laughs> so it can see you in the dark. Uh, and stuff. Why are you laughing? 
Oh, just for relaxation. We'll say the next set of pictures after that are particularly spanking because it, it goes back to see what's happening on Earth. And, uh, and there's oh, a couple look. of like World esque. Yeah. With like a smoky backdrop and shit like that. They're fucking great. I really like that. The only thing I don't like is uh, the smokestack factory picture. When you click on it, it's still that size. It doesn't get ambiguated. And it's oh, shame. The jizz, the jizz orgasm machine that Ryan used to use. He was so happy with that. And of course. Cavalry. Cavalry. Martian Cav mounted on space dinosaurs. I'm trying to remember what flavor of Martians they are. Imperial Martian Army. In my heart of hearts, I wouldn't say red, but they could be black or white, or who knows. It looks... Uh... Look at it. Look at them. Look at them fucking lined up there. On square bases. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful. Of course they are. That's the only way you can get a fucking decent game. Yes, especially if the base size resembles strength of unit. So the base sizes do need to vary, as you have taught me just prior to this show. Yep. Unlike other companies, don't know what the fuck they're doing. Cats. Oh, I, I'm, I'm sure they know what they're doing, and they're, they're, they will have a reason that is not good. Well, they've already said what the reason is. It's so they can make big, ridiculous living fucking models that don't rank up. It's and a make stupid even more money. reason for retards. <laughs> I would suggest that they should be spayed or neutered, because I don't want anybody making these decisions fucking breeding. And the worst part of it is their vote counts exactly the same as my vote. Mm. Which is just offensive to me. Anyway. Yeah, I think this is where we left off last time with the... Uh... It's, it's little 18 mil Martians. Yeah. yeah. And the just slaughtered B-Wing. Mm. But that... That's another thing about this project, apart from the forces being put together for it, is the various little touches for scenery. There's some great looking things in there. And they're just so starkly different from the dusty oxide Martian red around it. Yeah, and well, why shouldn't they be? Hmm. Yeah, the um, frog creature comes from uh, Iron Gip. I keep forgetting they do occasional weird miniatures and stuff because they do so much scenery. It's mostly what I look at when I go there. <laughs> Your sensory gets overloaded. Yeah, you know. It's, it's easy to pass them by. Put it like that. But yeah, it's it's cracking. All it's missing is just some sort of big sexy battle report. Although, I mean, there's enough photos there they could have wrote a battle report. Explaining hey, what was happening, yeah. <laughs> explaining what was happening with um, with the poor miners who are just old west style miners, just stuck out on this Martian planet, barely it's, scraping it's, by. Start digging, you fucks! <laughs> Bring us home some unobtainium. I, I, I know. I usually say we need different uh, new miniature designs, but somehow. Weapon wielding spiders is something that's very unsettling. <laughs> it's the way they come at you. I mean, the minute, they can... the minute they see you with a brush or like a handkerchief or a rolled up newspaper coming, that's when you find out who the fastest erected in the West is. Uh, well, they, they, they don't see me with that kind of stuff. I usually go for the hairspray and uh, lighter. lighter and go whoosh. And in, a little inside voice goes, <laughs> Get the flaming waffle. And then they're gone. Just like that. Well, they knew the risks. 
they all knew the risk. If you haven't been in this one before, Damon, it's worth going through and having a look further down because there's all sorts of weird kit bashing nonsense going on with Aztec oh, yeah. parts and, and and all sorts of bad shittery. Horrible, horrible dismemberment of model kits and toys. So, uh, if horrible. if you're awesome. still weeping after your toys that your mommy gave away to your cousin, <laughs> you, you may not want to watch this. <laughs> Ah, Hello, Zork. Just rocked back and forward. <laughs> my toys, my toys, my toys. <laughs> I mean, the grand scheme of things, you'd hardly realise you'd done it. It has not affected Lloyd in any way, shape, or form. He rarely <laughs> mentions it. Not in the slightest. You. Yep. So, where do we go from here? We're we leaving Mars and we're going to. I thought we'd take a look at the Wiki Wiki Wawa world of Malifaux. Malifo. Yeah. By defective dice. Oh, see. See, we even let people from the audience participate. Yeah, it's just so we can watch you dance, dance people dance. <laughs> dance monkey. Uh, there's some really nice stuff in here again. Obviously, DD's been just firing out videos constantly about the lore and um, background for some of the people. Uh, but. It's always secondary to the uh, the miniatures, and it's great seeing not just these, but there's a whole slew of base building. Um, so sort of the different gangs have a, a themed base to go with, which I really like, including these terrible bastards. <laughs> terrible, terrible bastards, right up there. Yeah. I got this the other week and I got it just because I fancied it. Uh, so this is the first time I've picked up one of these. It's Malifaux's Toil and Trouble. You're gone. Of course I'm gone. <laughs> Malifaux was hiding you. <laughs> mm, it, well, it would do, wouldn't it? I'm back again. Toil and Trouble. Uh, it's a Rotten Harvest Special Edition. So it's it's the same miniature rules but with a different set of things and it's it's a fascinating little set of figures because um prior to these my only experience had been with hard plastic sprue stuff so these are all pre-built or one piece i expect i won't get to keep that the i expect once the pumpkins are spotted they will be wanting that for Night stalkerness or something. I'm trying to make sense of the magnets in the base. Are they just for the miniatures? No, they're for transportation and stuff. But if you use on, a, on the top side. Yeah, but if you use a strong, if you use a strong magnet, it goes through. I my Wrath of Kings minis were all done like that. Magnet on top, mm -hmm. base over the top of it, and then it means you don't have to worry about the magnet pulling off. Oh, it's pulling against plastic. Yeah, I, I see. I see. If if the mag magnet is too strong, you're not getting your miniature back. Well, you'll oh. get the miniature, but the base will be left. Yeah. As I've discovered, <laughs> the, the base will be left on the tray. Um, I mean, presumably, that's why he's done it, because none of the, uh, the feet, I think, match up. He can tell us. Magnets that. are for storage. Yeah, they changed bases saying. recently, so there isn't a gap on the bottom, so they need to be drilled. Special edition sets are bad for my collecting impulse. Welcome to the show. <laughs> I, I tell you what, DD. Um, the, oh, what do they call it? Iconic range. Oh, God, I, I, that name I, alone. <laughs> I got an email about the upcoming sets for the Iconic range uh, last week, which probably has to go into the news this week, actually. Um, and I hadn't realized they'd done this. So Malifaux... Obviously, the miniatures are really nice. They have a great sort of variety of sculpts, but some of them, I mean, like I picked up things just to paint. I've got a, a hungering darkness somewhere, wherever his name is. Um, some things I picked up for other other games, but the iconic set, you get the miniature, you get the card for the miniature, and then you get a like 90 mil version of the miniature for painting so <laughs> uh, and they're either i think they say they're a classic example 
from their storyline, either something that happened in the past, something that's happening in the current storyline, or something that is going to happen in the future. Uh, and those, I don't know if you've seen those, Didi, but fuck me, they are spanking. What's I've, going I've... to happen in the future? Isn't that like spoilers? Oh, yeah. I don't, don't care about that. I really don't care about it. But yeah, some, um, some beautiful figures and some really interesting figures as well. Malifaux, so it's, it's really nice to see them getting done up. At some point, I really want to actually start playing the game. I just never get a chance to fucking get near it. Well, you, you could teach Shay. I'm guessing he will be well, yeah, more have to than willing. Shea. Yeah, he needs somebody sensible. He can do the <laughs> other kids. And he does his own painting, so there's that going. That is, that is true. Yeah, yeah. He will. He'll hammer the stuff out. Well, I, I'd like to show more, but uh, as people can see, my internet connection is somehow messing oh, up it's, everything. It's... It's turd, mate. Your internet connection is absolutely turd tonight. Just throw that one out there. Uh, but some really nice basing examples and, and things you can steal. For, and, you know, if you don't play Malifaux, you can always use them for other things. But I definitely think if it's one of those games and worlds that if you're interested in finding out more, go and watch some of the lore videos. Yeah. Um... We're, we're subscribed to TD's channel as well because he gets like little sneaky pics and stuff that you can ask. Short question for the audience Is anybody else having slow loading problems or is this just s simply a me problem right uh, now? I think it's you. It's very much a you problem because I can open up shit and it's just going, yep, here it's open now. Are you enjoying that? Do you want to open now? And it's, it's not because of the streaming because streaming was off before I opened these projects and it just wouldn't go anywhere. <sighs> Ah, uh, pain in my neck thinking about playing on things, over computer things. Ah, <laughs> uh, though I do appreciate the offer, and I might take you up on it actually. So, but yes. Like the kids do on the computer. Yeah. Oh, if anybody's ever seen me ha being forced to do a Let's Play. On like oh, pro yeah, games I remember. And stuff. At, at the height of uh, the event. Oh, it's so bad. Oh, and, no. because, and because it's recording everything that I'm doing, so if I go to pick up dice or look at a card, then all of a sudden everybody's looking at that, and they, oh, it's, it's like motion sickness. Anyway, Word of Sour's just... death spread around the bayou quickly. Feed See, this hands. video is just loading fine. It's in Germany? I don't think so. Did you say that? Look, grublins. Yeah, there, there, there has been known issues with uh, my provider for outside oh, yes. Germany Fairly certain. servers for some times, and they seem not to get anything working, bastards. Uh, let's just go on to the next crippling project then, please. Oh, good times. <laughs> good times. This is a shortish update. Hellisen Rises by Greystoke. Yes. Oh, he does shieldings? He is not in any way, shape, or form using Brain Matter Beige. Uh, so, Gray oh, started off. Uh, I'm not sure when he started off because I've been commenting on this while it's been private. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, at least tradition. He released it into the wild at some point. Let's put it like that. Um, I think get, was, getting comments from you while it's still private is... Uh, it's a so, general so, nudge to people to make sure that they haven't forgot to put it public. It's, sometimes. It's, I, I was going to say it's some kind of uh, semi-gold button. <laughs> yeah. so I watch you when you sleep. Um, oh, he's in the chat. Hi, Gray. Um, but he's starting to get into test games now. So uh, the first chunk... Uh, explains the plan for the actual uh, legion and includes the army lists at different points values so you're like 500 points and 650 800 um, so it's nice it's like a slow grow uh, that you can follow along with and add um, which is good especially for a game like conquest and it's also good because at 800 points you're like halfway towards a 
a full on game, but you've enough options kicking around that you can strip them out for a game of first blood um, and have a go with that. But there's been some bits and pieces done here, the likes of the um, Ferengian guard that, being converted. That sounds like a proper pain in the neck. Aha! <laughs> Casting is a single piece and then go to town with clippers and a blade. Oh, God. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. It's all good. Hmm. Oh, well, you know, there's no point in putting quotes there. Technically, it is private. Private for little people. Uh, but the, um, the most recent update with the shields is a really nice breakdown on Harry Speed. Both trying to add a bit of tone and definition to the shields without adding too much additional work yeah um, and also some nice tests so you can see you know um, various washes on them soft mid dark tone uh drakenhof which is the blue purple one i think um which really changes the, the look of the whole thing completely weirdly the army painter skin tone set they've just released has got a wash for black skin and it has a greenish purple tint to it and it's fucking phenomenal on gold in a similar way i suppose to the the drakenhof um but but you know better so yeah, interesting to see where this is going to go. Have you thought about a contrasting color scheme for the Romanes? They go to the house, or are you going to stick <laughs> relatively close to the the sort of the box art look on them with the purple? And I know there's about a twenty second delay, so we'll fill with some uh, dancing. So the bedding Cree effect is a separate paint and not just a color, but a effects paint by model mates. Yeah. Um, if you're looking to buy it, you'll need to buy it under the name Dirty Down because they no longer produce it under the name model mates, but you get more in a pot. Uh, mm. It's water It's water based. They do a rust. They do. Actually, I was going to start saying a lot of stuff, but they've they don't do all of them anymore. They do a rust, they do a verdigris. I think they do a moss as dirty down. You need something the, to the contrast. The effects look really, really nice and convincing. It, it, it's fucking amazing. But the reason it's amazing is they invented it for TV and film crews. Oh. <laughs> so if they needed to weather something, like the the filming something and they need to have a load of rusty shit or really aged pieces they can do it and because it's water based you can just wash it off with warm water and it goes away completely so it's it's amazing stuff it does mean you will need to spray varnish them because if you go near it with a paintbrush it's and a varnish it, it will reactivate and then it'll start moving around and doing weird shit so um spray varnish is your friend but I mean, the, the rust one in and of itself looks like actual rust because the more you apply it, the rougher the texture gets and the darker it gets. And it's, yeah, it's. it's, it's I'm, I'm guessing that phenomenal. will be some kind of metal shavings in some kind of corrosive stuff. Um, no, I don't think so. Um, interesting you say that, great, because I mean. Only if you're going for complementary. What if you instead of, instead of going for that, like go for a, a triad or um, split complementary might give you. So, so you're looking to go from the verdigris. Yeah, orange or red are probably still your best bet. Hmm. And no ambiguated pictures for me, it seems. Look at the internet. Well, I mean, a dark royal blue would work if you went for like a, a tetrad. Um, because you've got that and you've got the verdigris. You'd still need a bit, <coughs> of, a bit of orange somewhere, but then potentially your 
skin slash bone may cover the oh, well I mean even the the gold to a certain extent would cover the yellow orange mm-hmm. 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 good evening James Scott uh, no not yet We're jam, jam 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 just starting about yeah I'm gonna stop spinning my color wheel around and see <laughs> round round spin your right round like a baby Yoda? Uh, yeah, also, but no. Deep Purple's great. I'm, I'm just checking things in the background to see where my problems with... Where do my problems stem from? Okay, I need to further investigate that. This is making no sense. Oh, oh my uh, God. No sense, but yeah. Plague? Plague? Me? Definitely worth having a wee nosy at Legion Rises. If you fancy having a look at some fun dead uh, Romans, especially since Clash of Spears have just released the first of their fantasy um, books. I say first of their fantasy books. It will only be one fantasy book, but it's going to be a living rule book, and they're going to add more armies into it. And there is specifically an undead legion in there um, from uh, Romans they go the house did you uh, get your space wolves finished Jerry Dave space asked. wolves uh, they're built uh, I've started playing around with color schemes and stuff uh, although I am just going to go for the box arty one so you know Toby grey and um, orange uh, but I haven't primed the rest yet Oh, so. demon sub, I'm not pressing all the buttons because last week, yeah, the week before, we had a new button that is Quest. Quest. Did I also show you I've got Avians and Avians too? You find those, you weirdo. <laughs> yeah, but I've got a new button. Here we go. The ghosts of Canai. More than 50,000 Roman soldiers perished at Cannae, unknown to many historians on the second night of the battle. While memories of their suffering were still fresh, a ghostly army of resurrected legionnaires came back from the dead seeking vengeance against the barbarians. Mm. This undead list allows you to feel undead Roman looking army after the defeat of Cannae. So technically wrong period armor if you're going to be using Undead legions from um, the Old Dominion, but at the same time, you're also going to be huge, huge fellas. So, so there you go. <laughs> this is amusing. It's amusing me greatly. Clan War. Bye, message to today. Second Regante novel. Yeah, where Kernos um, goes off paste somewhat. So yeah, uh, the hundred and sixty-seven miniatures. Well, mm. good luck. <laughs> I mean, hundred and three down, sixty-four to go. Fucking stomping through it at the moment, Jodan. Um, working on his Clan Wars Legend of the Five Ring Army uh, in glorious Technicolor, even if he has gone with Phoenix. And I was so proud of myself. Getting ahead of my Battletech pile of opportunity. <laughs> you get ahead uh, of your Battletech, you know. Uh, 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 speaking of, of Battletech, I today oh. got the, uh, what do you call it, um, Becca Kids questionnaire survey. Quest. And it's really hard to decide on what to get, where to click. But I just closed my eyes and clicked around, and now the waiting begins. Close your eyes and just go send me Max. I don't care what Max, just send me Max. All of the goodies that I paid for. Uh, So why are these... Weird warriors looking that 
stony. Because they're creepy. Uh, Legend of the Five Rings is a fantasy feudal Japan. It's, well, it's not even actually Japan. It's a completely different world. What? It's but, not real. But with a, a Japanese feel. So, so it's not. It's not like um, Bushido or was it Bushido? What's the one from Zenit? Kensi. It's not like Kensi where it, it's on our world, but with fantasy stuff. This is just fantasy world. This is like Serania from the Rift, Rift War books. Only more so. A um, whole host of stuff from uh, Joe Dan. Uh, he's been working through regiment after regiment of fucking awesomeness. Something happened. Pictures are loading. Are you noticing? Yeah, yeah, we're all very impressed with you and your internet. Well done, you. Not, not sure what happened. Well, don't jinx it. So the <laughs> first right. time we looked, the first time we looked at this, it was more or less the standard bog standard troops out of the uh, core set. But since then, there's been a whole rake of special characters and some of the more unusual units as well. Uh, especially when you get into specific clans have specific units that are unique to them so not everybody because of the the way they they fought have access to everything in germany i don't know maybe they put another shovel of coal on the fire maybe that's how they did it internet <laughs> internet slowing down throw a couple more shovels of coal on the fire there oh i just love the idea that germany's internet is now fucking coal powered I wouldn't put it past them, uh, especially no, no. in the southern regions. 100%. Oh, funny diversion. Have, have you seen, potentially not, the uh, proposal the EU is making that Germany should dive, uh, uh, divide its north and south energy grids? No, I haven't seen that. R reason being, northern parts of Germany are doing everything they can to switch over to alternative uh, sources of energy so very much wind turbines all the way mm. and we are producing so much energy it's not even funny anymore and we could provide energy to the south but the south doesn't want to have new lines built so they're just doing the stubborn little kid move no we don't want your winds Nice. And the EU saying, yeah, well, then divide Germany into two halves, north and south, so the north can have even cheaper electricity. <laughs> oh, that would be hilarious. It would be. <laughs> don't want to be part of the grid, then fuck is. Enjoy your higher prices. Oh, you're south of the Weißwurst Equator? Sucks to be you. <laughs> it's very similar to that, John. Uh, like that, 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 that uh, actually a part of history because uh, the, those both Aldis are working together again. Ever since I think one of the brothers died. Well, that's cool. Why are we talking about electricity? Ah, uh, I don't care. Oh, uh -huh. your internet. Yeah, the internet is for porn. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So, yes. interesting little project, especially Every if people aren't aware of clan wars which most people aren't i think there's an awful lot of people think it, it started about 12 years ago with fantasy flight game making sh shit card games whereas in actual fact it was a well-rounded world decades ago with both rpg and tabletop miniature game um what a shame that was all shoved to one side now i think fifth edition shot all over it well, that seems to be a uh, a rather common appearance for for some games that uh, companies just can't keep up or feel the need to ch change things and then fuck it oh, up. Well, I think uh, AG possibly went out of business. Well, that w w won't help make maintaining proper production i guess yep so after these legendary five rings where do we go uh, 
Dread Ball. Dreaded Ball by Ugleb. By, as you say, Ug, as you say, Gleb. Discuss. Oh, look, Ultramarines. Uh, you wash your mouth out. Cheers. You absolute filth wizard, you. So, Ugleb's been hammering through all of his fucking teams. Um, there are a lot in here, including uh, a rake of some of the other sort of dribble to resiny bits, like additional managers and the commentators. Commentators, which are there to hold the um, event cards, you can, it slips in behind them, so you can see what event is in play, like if multi-ball or something kicks off. Multi-ball! Hey, you know, sometimes people want more than one ball on the arena because then more people score and more people get brutally injured. Brutal and brutal to lax. Uh, but there's some absolutely cracking sculpts near really nice paint jobs a gleb as well. Um it almost makes me want to find mine and uh I can't oh, but I won't. It's all gone black. Pedal. Image can't be displayed. It contains errors. Does it? What image was that? Uh, Images.peaceofwar.com 2019-04-1277-4992 Commentators minus 3 dot jpeg So it's one of the commentators. I'm just going to open all the commentator pictures now. Fine, 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 fine. Yeah, they're all fine, yeah. I'm, I'm not are sure they, what they happens. That quickly? <laughs> Hitting F5 and it works. I'm, ah. I'm, I'm going to call the load balancer is fucking again. Otherwise, I, I couldn't just uh, uh, explain this. Sure. Is that the guy from uh, from Stargate, the general? Nope. <laughs> he looks like it. Or he could have been painted white. I'm fairly certain he was a big black guy. The coach or the general from Stargate? Coach. The general from Stargate is... Uh, dead. So we know it's not him. Mm, sad. He is the uh, prison warden from Dreadball Extreme. Like that. Oh, was it Stir Crazy? With. Uh, oh, what are their names? Richard Pryor and Gene Wilder. Remember, they got arrested, and it turned out one of them was really good at doing rodeo riding. And uh, <laughs> even though they were in, the warden forced them to be part of the rodeo team so they could uh, win some sort of challenge thing. It's good. I, I, I remember multiple movies with both of them in it, yeah, but can't tell the name of it. But most favorably. Well that, well, that was the one where they were convicted. I, I love the one where uh, one was blind and the other one was deaf. <laughs> See no evil, hear no evil. Yeah, that's just brilliant. He didn't know he was black. <laughs> I'm black? <laughs> oh, that was great. <sighs> and and that, that really showed some genuine nice acting. Oh, they were fantastic. But yeah, it's really nice seeing somebody painting up the dreadball teams i feel like i should really paint yours <laughs> paint mine and inflict dreadball on people up at uh ott what, especially because because i've got things hmm? what, what's up with these three just sitting there uh, are they on you, strike if you get yeah. knocked if you get knocked prone instead of lying down a model that will fill multiple hexes you can just replace it with a little prone marker so that's was... prone marker I was just asking if they glued themselves to the playing field to demonstrate some things. No, because then people would open Schistroming beside them. <laughs> That's what we call the Schistroming challenge. Just saying. Oh, can, can you imagine? <laughs> I would love to. I would love to. But this, this really shows just how many teams there are for Dreadball. A buttload, I guess, uh, is the correct there, answer. Yeah. Because that, I think, is mostly the new teams plus extreme. Uh, I think 
you start hitting mid twenties when you get them all. Um, but it's really great because they've got things like the cyborg team there, which the team manager is just this mad doctor who's just forever fucking grabbing people. <laughs> snip, 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 snap, snap. You're now you're part of the team, and you are now part of the team. Yep, it's all good. It's all good. I seen a really interesting table the other day. It wasn't a dreadful table. It was just one that some we woodworky man made. Um, but he filled it with like blue resin and then cut it into hexes uh, and then fitted touch sensitive LEDs into them. Mm. So whenever you touch it, they're not, they, they go on when you touch it, but then they slowly go, they go off after like over a second, second and a half. So, you know, if you run your hand across it, you get this wave effect. And every time you put something on the table, like a bottle or the cat stepped on it or whatever, all I was thinking was that would make the most amazing dread ball table ever <laughs> because the hexes where your players are would be lit up and you could just put the little scoring posts so that you, you always know where you're aiming for. Also, that would make a very nice uh, battle report in the dark. <laughs> yeah. You could do that as well. That would work. Oh, not plasma processes. Yeah. <laughs> Ah, uh, fun times and lovely, lovely. The only thing that's now needed is a proper battle report, I feel. After he's been many, making G so play. much. There's a leak. Hmm. And we've jinxed it. <laughs> yep. Calling shenanigans. It's uh... who do I call to complain about stuff? Jam, 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 jam. Look at that! Look at, look at that little dreadful league. Look, multiple games going on. It's like Blood Bowl, but a game that actually works. Well, Blood Bowl does work. Oh, fuck! It feels at age these days. Well, for me, Gro it did. I grow old and die. <laughs> waiting for a turn to fucking take place in Blood Bowl. Well, then you're playing with the wrong people. No, no, it's just how it goes. Ah, uh, James is to blame. He's uploading pictures and killing it again. It's the best uh, way. So, uh, what, what comes after Ultramarines? After Ultramarines, we're going to get our baps out in a hot tub. Baps! Baps out for the lads. Boobies! Bap sailors and special characters again defective dice yeah but i've oh. been looking at a lot of this stuff recently especially because the um blood and pigment guys have been running the uh painting challenge so i've just been spending a lot of time looking at people's painted pirates a lot of peas in there hmm. but no nisses look one of the naive Americans. Or just somebody who really wants to be free in, in the wind. <laughs> oh, look, there's actually a uh, so, sort of tutorial on how to get abs. Ah, it's not as easy as you think. Not as easy as you think. Bloody hell. But the nice thing about this is it um, it shows you how you can get a really colourful pirate force together using uh, express and speed paints in short order. Mm, that looks interesting. A black Caesar guy reminds me of some sort of anime character. C could be. He was uh, a slave who was captured by Blackbeard and then released. And he just ended up being a pirate of Blackbeard. Mm -mm. Which is probably the better life than being a slave, I guess. Yeah, I mean, you know, keeps my mischief off the streets. That's not the main thing. Uh, now, now I have a, uh, a, a weird earworm in my, my head again from way back when. 
there, there was a, uh, or rather say there is a, a teenage you young people's reading material called the three question marks, die drei okay. Fragezeichen. And uh, those are three detectives and they do s silly stuff. And there's one adventure where they collect uh, odd, uh, what you call them, um, Punctuation. Errant no. punctuation. <laughs> Talking birds. Parrots. Parrots, that's the one. And one is always reciting a paragraph going, Ich bin Blackbeard, der Pirat. Fair enough. And that's in there multiple times, so that has engraved itself in my brain. Ich bin Blackbeard, der Pirat. Ah. Makes sense. <laughs> for giving value of sense, I suppose. Uh, uh, don't don't mind me. I'm just here for for the pretty pictures. Oh, we're trying desperately not to, but unfortunately, <laughs> very vocal. Um, but yeah, so obviously, pirates are fun, like the Nazis. Are you going out after Midwinter Minis again? <laughs> no. There's a... What you call a Mitchell and Webb thing. You know, are we the baddies? Oh, yeah. I, and, I know and, that and, meme. And then at one point they go... They're like people nobody likes, like pirates. Pirates are fun. Fun or not, they're still the baddies. <laughs> are we the baddies? Yes, mate. So, interesting thing for me about this is, um, apart from using War Games Atlantic as text as additional natives, which is a, a is a concept I will be stealing to flesh out the native box <laughs> I've got. Um, so, thanks for that. There's a summer of plunder campaign coming up in a few weeks. I didn't see if I can actually talk to the guys. Uh, um, maybe get an interview with them before it kicks off. But if people are interested, and I know some people have picked up some piratey stuff with the Kickstarter with the, the two-player set coming out. Um, but Oak and Iron and Blood and Plunder will both be part of this campaign. So you can play one, you can play them both you know, up to you and your gaming group uh, and you can feed your results in um, from either side. So hopefully I'm going to see, ah, I see in that jam, the, possibly with rigging on your ships. Um, <laughs> but it'll be interesting to see how how the, the campaign goes and uh, hopefully Dee Dee will uh, th throw his hat in the ring as well, play some games, be part of the campaign. I have to ask you a question, Jerry. You you once mentioned that you're using some kind of black book to keep track of your painting schemes, if yes. I remember correctly. Yes. My Do you notebook. also have another black book to keep track of all the ideas you're stealing? No, no, I just remember those. Oh, okay. Well, just, just making sure that there's not more paperwork involved in stealing other people's ideas. Oh, no, it's very easy. Okay, that's, uh, that's fine then. Let's move on before my internet totally shits the bed. Bed shitting. All about the bed shitting. Boom, boom, boom. Boomy says Bushido it is. By Redford. <laughs> yes. He's doing uh, interesting little huts. Not to be confused with the big worm-like creatures from Star Wars. <laughs> Crispin, that will be a tale you can regale us all with later on. So... <laughs> uh, uh, I, I think on that front, uh, Warhammer Grimace has a tale to tell as, as well. Yeah, it seems to be spreading. Yeah, please uh, do not spread. <laughs> Chinese lunar trips, cool. Hello, Firelock22. Um, Got to upload more work to project. Need to finish off my For All Mankind Chinese lunar troops. 
Nice. <laughs> What's that a fan involved, Crispin? <laughs> It's a beautiful, beautiful dream. Spreading the love. <laughs> so some interesting bits and pieces in here, uh, as always. So Redverse is getting into Bushido with the sun. Um, there's some nice examples of the rice stores, which even if you're not doing oriental um, style gaming, almost identical to the wheat stores in medieval uh, Europe, where they would have them up off the ground so the damp didn't seep through and keep some of the uh, vermin off them. So you can use some of these ideas anyway, but the, uh, the couple of cheap uh, brushes give up their bristles to do the sort of thatching on it, which is a, a nice little touch just to spruce up the the mdf laser cut stuff yeah especially since these wooden constructions would actually look very rectangular and and the uh thatching for lack of a better term gives them some kind of uh natural look yeah well i mean you can see there are examples in the uh the, the project as well of real ones um so you can see the sort of the idea behind it Which is always fun. Yeah. Dun, 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 dun. Making things look real like uh, original stuff is always an interesting thing. Yeah. Uh, now they have picked their factions. Um, which for Sun was easier because the Temple of Rukan can have a bow staff wielding panda. So once he heard <laughs> that, he was all in on that one. Um, Kung Fu Panda. That's the one. Uh, although, well, yeah, I suppose I'm trying to think when the pandas and Mr. Pandera came out, but I think it was after Kung Fu Panda. But I think they look slightly more like that. Um, he's been having an idea for a few different factions, but in the meantime, he's been working away on a ton of terrain and printing out some other bits and pieces like rat swarms and stuff like that from uh, 3D printing people. Uh, but the uh, the terrain here has been lovely. I think I'm getting some sort of 3D terrain and stuff like that from um, Zenit for that, that last Kickstarter I backed, which will go with the other 3D files that I own into a folder <laughs> to be forgotten forever. The, the the only folder that will remain after your house burns down or something. <laughs> That's the one. And people come along and go, oh, nothing's left except this thing full of 3D printing. You must have loved 3D printing. <laughs> <laughs> Write that into the eulogy. It's important that everybody at the funeral oh, knows God. how much he enjoyed 3D printing. I think that that's the point in the eulogy when you start creeping out of your casket and go, what the fuck are you telling people? <laughs> Hammering the ever-living shit out of it. Uh, but these little little 3D resiny pieces, the um, fancy roadside shrines and lanterns and stuff like that, they're really nice, uh, especially when you consider so much of the um, individual buildings are going to be uh, laser cut MDF, sort of Sarissa stuff. So it's nice to have something that isn't just all right angled wood. Uh, just to break up the look somewhat. I do keep having a... a uh, look at the Ushiri. Ushiru. Resin range. I have a sneaking suspicion it would have been cheaper for me to buy the resin, or at least the same price for me to buy the resin as buying those pre-coloured stuff from Zenith, uh, <laughs> and the resin looks better, but then I would have to paint all the resin. Uh, at least there's stuff I can just glue it together and go, done now, walk away. Well, like well, those spinny things. If, if you're uh, updating all your projects, you might want to bring along something to eat and drink and have a big bucket of patience. <laughs> Only if he's doing it from Germany, and apparently the rest of the world's fine, man. Uh... 
We need Anschluss. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but lo lovely mixture of terrain and miniatures. Yeah, you got, it does have the starter set and a faction. I don't think, I don't think any of the miniatures that are assembled there are actually for any of the factions he's actually thinking of doing. To be fair. <laughs> um, because they are just the ones that come in the starter sets. So it's like, yeah, we've got these. Got got two factions, two gangs to start with. Won't be using any of them. They go in the back of the van. Well, but it's it's a lovely mixture of uh, miniatures, terrain, and uh, horrible 3D printedness. Yep, kind of everything. But I am fascinated to see where this goes as well. Yeah, and especially the as he's mentioning, the uh, rule book is only a5 i like rule books that can be handled with one hand and don't kill you when you drop them off on your head while you're falling right. asleep reading them oh uh, you probably shouldn't do that yeah uh, to try doing so that just with... pour the resin into justin is that how it works <laughs> could be sure <laughs> oh please no it's, justin it's... doesn't do any justin doesn't do any 3d printing either not anymore nope I remember some kind of video in the in the store where he's showing off the newest printer. Back then, I think it was prior to the big forty k event where they built mm. all these these huge tables. I remember so long ago. We've all passed a lot of water since then. And other things, as is uh, proven by Crispin and Warhammer Grimace. Mm. <laughs> I like rule books that contain decent rule systems. Don't, I don't care what size they are. <laughs> I'm just like that. Has he broken the machines? Probably. But I can't tell because I'm not there and it's not my problem most of the time. So after South Asia, Bushido stuffy, where do we go? What's Off topic Navel. Navel? Navel, Navel? Yeah, good point, Crispin. Novel, God's novel. way of saying don't 3D print. Just or almost he, or he will kill you. <laughs> My God, it's a vengeful prince God. will kill you. Oh, Elmia is doing uh, dystopian wars. Boats! Uh, I've had a quick glance over these pictures just prior, and the paint jobs are gorgeous yeah but i do believe he's french <gasps> so you know kind of equals out <laughs> <laughs> well from my perspective we're on equal ground uh con considering how much the uh the british and the irish obviously hate us we don't hate you no. Hey, anyone? No. Mm -hmm. okay. do, do, do you know why Germany plays their football matches in a green away strip? No. That was a, a homage to Ireland. Because after the emergency, in the run up to uh, the, who would have been 48 World Cup? There weren't a lot of countries willing to uh, play Germany. Uh, Ireland did, because we were neutral and didn't care. And after that, they went with the Green Away Strip as a little tribute mm. to Ireland. So, see, we're all great. Learn something new every day. Not we're all got, got out of bed for nothing. Great mates here. I like his tiny cracking chip things as well. He's a talented bastard, is he? Mm. Just look at those very detailed bases, let alone the, the models on top. I tell, I tell you what, Orinoco, um, he's also painted up a lot of Wild West Exodus. Wild, Wild and West. I think, I think they're in a project as well. So if you click on his face later on, you can go and have a look at it as well. And, so obviously full 20, well, I was going to say 28 mil, whatever size they are, 35, 40 mil figures, but with like skin and stuff. Because th these look great as a fleet. 
but you're limited into how much you can do. You know, because it's a very small, small scale. So once you've done your main color and you know highlight and pen wash or whatever else it happens to be, that's kind of Johnny all she wrote. His work on his wild west Exodus stuff is fucking the nuts, mutts. That's mats, mats, nuts. Dogs, bollocks. Bollocks. That, that's a striking colour. <laughs> oh, fuck yeah. Well, you know, French. That's a, a brave colour scheme to rock on the table. I, I'm on board with them. Because the. Who I think needs the, camouflage anyway? I think the. Stu well, if you've got a flying ship, it's very difficult to camouflage it. I think the, <laughs> the studio paint scheme is like a metallic blue. I mean, it's all right, but but these these just look fucking great. They are very Centauri, yeah, especially <laughs> with the gold. Ah, uh, the great French Empire. That's a lot of stuff for one tiny game. Yeah, well, you know, if you want to do something, do it to excess. I also like the fact he's done terrain and um and this is something we've been talking about on and off because the stupid wars because it's naval there's not a huge amount of terrain but kicking why? around for it because people are very lazy and it's a tiny tiny scale so it means you know with the exception of four small little islands or whatever it is they've done in the resin set and they've done a couple of oil platforms that have been up gun now as well you don't really have much um, but these these show off you can do some fucking cracking terrain and, and the, it makes me wonder because uh, even simple games like X-Wing have multitudes of terrain in, on their small 3x3 three three. Why, so why not put some islands or oil Jeez. rigs or anything uh, never seen well you know there, there's no reason not to but when you consider how much ocean is full of ocean and fuck all else yeah but then again where do most naval battles happen not in the open sea but somewhere close to shorelines where they can sneak up on each other so Also, it makes the table more interesting. I've seen your impressions. Oh, yeah, it does make the table more interesting. The, you have to strike a balance, though. Yeah, that's true. Because if we start doing that, then Warren will have, want to have nothing except terrain <laughs> on the table, and then you can't actually fucking move and play. And, and you end up with a 3 by 6 table with a small pond in the middle. <laughs> pond in the middle and just one, one boat. And it's spinning slowly. Well, the flying boats could be anywhere because they're flying, but... Uh... Uh, not all of them. Some of them just sort of skip out of the water. Uh, so, so like uh, when you throw like the fish. Flat, flat, flat rock across the surface. Mm. I, I, I'm i loving this. This is grand. I need to revisit when my internet is more up to speed. Mm -hmm. Speed, power. It's even got the massive radar dish that uh, Boromir dies on. <laughs> what? Oh, ah, I see. Yes. So I, I'm fairly certain that comes via the medium of um, Lazy Forger. I think John's printed that out already. Uh, I think he mil. said Lazy Forger in the prior. Oh, where is it? Uh, 3D printed bridges from the Lazy Forger and foam board, so I'm guessing the rest is Lazy Forger as well. Yeah. That's nice. That's very nice. You're a talented thingamajig. <laughs> yep. Look. Not everything has to be steely grey. Although he hasn't done Dazzle camo on anybody yet, which is, uh, <laughs> shows that he's slacking off somewhat, I feel. Uh, 
put put it in in his suggestions. So, uh, where do we go from here? <laughs> Is there more? I hope here we are. You crash. You fuck. Somebody got married. <laughs> yep. This time, no, it could just be a drug dealer. Or was there some kind of uh, sports activity? No. They uh, don't do that for marriage here. If it's somebody's birthday, they make time to the back of a trailer and drive them through town, sort of fuck flour and eggs and stuff at them. Mm, Stones. Good times. Yep. So Panzer Kaput is going back to Rome. You've got to go back, back, back to school again. Back in time. Oh, oh, I got to go back to school. And I can't hit clicks for to save my life. <laughs> can't hit a click. You just need to hang around outside of school, and when you see a little click walking out together in a group, just floor it. Uh, no. <laughs> No. You like to hit them when they're close to school. It's like uh, fox hunting. <laughs> That's illegal, I think. Uh, not in Northern Ireland, it's not now. Because we don't have a functioning assembly. <laughs> One more is I think Panzer has now everything Baron's War, so needs to do Rome. Yeah, well, he, he did do a lot of gangs of room stuff ages ago. Um, they're about to have done. I can't remember. They may have gone. They may have already done gangs of room two Kickstarter. Um, I can't honestly remember. If not, it's not far away. So he's back, touching up, or in this case, dirtying down uh, some bits and pieces with the old Romans. They go to the house. And we're not getting images again. And by we, we mean you. Yes, and everybody who's watching. Oh, no. Well, they might not be, but I'm looking at my own screen and I'm seeing it. It's great. Uh, so, you know, well done, me. There's the bakers at the far end. I really like his, his stuff because it's not all white and pristine. If you could see the rest of that below the bakery sign that's painted on there, there's things like gladiators, um, graffiti, where somebody's, you know, drawn up the side of the building, their favourite gladiator. The most important question is, is there somewhere hidden a mutinous tutus? I'm guessing not. He probably forgot about that. I mean, I'm fairly certain he's got more of room than this. <laughs> the problem is, I'm fairly certain Dickie Boyd has also done a fuckload of room. And sometimes I blur between who has done what, because they 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 went for a very similar style of painting with a lot of um, bright colours and then added hand drawn, you know, signage and shit. Look at that one there. Huh? What? Hmm. Anybody who wants to, uh... I could ask my daughter, but she's asleep. No, no, they're Latin speakers now. Terrible. Why do we keep you around if nobody is able to help? There he is, then. <laughs> Hello, Pete. Hello, Pete. What's that say in Latin? Because I, I presumably it's something in the style of Romans, they go to the house. Oh, they used the Rome TV series for inspiration. Ah. Well, you, you could tell us. Is there a Ray Stevenson? I think somebody did do a model of Titus. And it may have been Warlord Games, actually. But yeah, it's, um, it's a really nice little view of a little subsection of room. I imagine mine would look something similar if Lloyd would ever pull the finger out and fucking build <laughs> it. Swear to God. You know those really useful boxes? You know the nine litre ones? Yes. I have two of those that are just filled with flat pack room. You so mean, I've, I've 18 litres of room. You mean flat packed 
MDF terrain that hasn't been built yet. So yes, it's... yeah, I have eighteen liters. That's got to be awfully heavy. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I'm not picking up. It's just, sit, <laughs> just sit, it's literally. I could reach out and touch it. Touched it. Reach out. And I touch. mean, I have built some, and then very, very quickly sprayed them some colors so that I could play the original Gangs of Rome with uh, Mick and Justin and other people to the go. Gas this, is what actually Gangs Rome gas is. from Pompeii. So, uh, what Peter's saying, he doesn't know what it says. Ah, uh, well, we'll find out at some point. <laughs> yeah, demon. He's a he's a demon for free handing stuff. Ah, oh, I see why I did that. But the, There's a few other bits and pieces um, that I've been messing around with myself because I've been relooking at Rome as well. Nick, uh, why are you hating building MDF? I I, I find it quite relaxing most of the time. The results are sometimes not. Uh, oh, you're in a playtest script, so, so it's not. One. They haven't hit Kickstarter yet, then. Why would you hit Kickstarter? Kickstarter is a person too, you know. Uh... Better the devil, you know. But a few others, because I mean, I don't know if if you've done this, Pete. Um, I was looking at. There's uh, Sarissa have done mosaics that you can download to put on the inside of things. Oh, it's finished already? Okay, right. there you go. Um, so they, they do a sheet, like an A4 sheet. I think you download it for free. It's just the um, it's just a, a set of six mosaic tiled floors that you can print out, color print out, and then stick down into your, your floors inside your fancier buildings. Um, but I was looking at that. You know the, the wavy trick you use for the flags? Get those, do the wavy flag trick, uh, and then throw some uh, speculative light over the top, and then you can put, put it into the bottom of pools and stuff. Mm. So it looks like the reflection of the water. So I'm, I'm fucking around with that. Uh, That's an interesting idea. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just it's a really simple. Once once you've learned how to do that thing once, it's a simple technique to to do other. Uh, but obviously, most people just go fluttering fabric. But then I was thinking you could do a fancy bottom of a pool or a bath or whatever it happens to be you know fountain in Rome. Um, so so there you go. Just threw that one out there. Run that one up the flagpole. See who salutes. Flag. Flags. And obviously, all the tiling on the roof is quite nice as well. I did my, I did mine with corrugated cardboard, and I wish I hunted around a bit more for actually something a bit more plasticky and durable. Mm. But then I'm very, very lazy. Well, I think we can fit in one more. One more? You absolute filth wizard. He's a filthy wizard. Oh, no, well, that's a different song. Fridge liners. I mean, I say that, but I've not actually tiled more than, I think, two roofs or three roofs for the, the initial set of mid-level buildings that I built so they could be scraped off very easily because I've not actually built anything else so hmm. Hmm. now you've given hmm. Jerry ideas again he's never going to finish his project you yeah, filthy that is, peasants that is my life <laughs> oh I should um, where's my blog folder because you'll probably like this beat. he's Swedish that's just for Pete. Nobody else let to click on that. <laughs> anyway, so Baron's War then. And it's not from Pete. No, Scribs has also been working on it in a scribbly fashion. Scribblosity. I'm not sure why, but the, this mounted dude with a flat helmet gives me Nightwatch vibes. <laughs> Right. 
Maybe it's just the helmet. I don't know. Slip away, slip away, his geezer. I really... That sort of flat kettle helm type thing is one of my favourite helmets for the period. I've got a whole rake of um, men-at-arms wearing them. Completely, I mean, theoretically, they shouldn't be for another hundred or so years for the force I built, but I wanted to be able to distinguish dunger men-at-arms from proper knight-type people. So, I bet the bullet on that one. Dun, 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 dun. Baron's War Altrima nearly got Dark Denigan into historical. I sing of cloth launderers and an owl, not arms and a man. All right, okay. Fair enough. Wacky fun. Some drunken seamstress. What? Uh-huh. <laughs> Holy relic guys need a hand grenade. Ah, they've got one, don't worry. But yeah. The Holy hand grenade of Antioch. So. He is working on his Barnes War, but it's very much Knights of uh, St. John's Hospital and the Dolly Mixtures, which just I appreciate on a very fundamental level because that is the way I've split my four tiny saga. Because after doing a little very depressingly black Militia Christie, I figured that's a great way of breaking it up by having the Dolly Mixtures on the go. Look, there's a turker pole. Look, you can see a mold line. Just say nothing. Shh. But again, it's um, right across the helmet, which is there. It's a really nice job. Uh, and Scribs has done a really nice job on the, uh, the paint job on them as well. Especially on the poppier Dolly mixtures. Knight Commander and Gonfalonier? What? <laughs> Is that a word? Bear. I mean, it's not as nice a standard as Boussant, but you can have everything. Seeing those hand painted, free handed crosses makes me really angry. I, I tried. Split cross. Painting Split cross. such a cross on a tiny battle mag and failed horribly. Oh, there's even a Malin cross further down with its curly. Oh, uh, well. now he's just showing off. The thing that gets me, and um, maybe they did include it somewhere. They they did. Uh, I can't remember the actor's name. He was in Waking. Waking Ned. Uh, he played Liam Neeson's hospitaler mate. Um, in what was the Ridley Scott film Kingdom of Heaven. And they made a figure of him way, 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 way before they even went near this period. It was just a little one-off and they give it away free when they, they did their, you know, if you order from us this month you'll get a free figure. And I'm, Let I, me guess, that's a highly sought after miniature now. I, I don't know. Oh, that's it. Ting Toy Linen. Might not be Waking Dead. What's the other one? Maybe he has Waking Dead. <sighs> no, because Waking Dead's the one about the lottery ticket, isn't it? Divorcing. Divorcing Jack. Yes, that's the one. David Thewlis. Anyway, I've never seen that again. I don't, don't even know if... I've got them as well because I got them as the freebie. But I would have thought when they did all the other Knights of Christ that he would have made an appearance somewhere. So, is he still in there? That's the one. Cracking figure. Oh, you can still buy him. That's okay. It was weird whenever they I seen the, the paint job and the, the brown. 
because you're going, it's clearly, because he's even got the, the flappy news card, it's clearly uh, David Thulis. He's just missing big lean to buy the shit out of people with. It was weird. I, I rewatched Divorce and Jack with Lena last year. I was, it was so fucking weird because I was in Belfast at uni at the time when they were filming that. And it's just really strange seeing that old Belfast, you know, before the Good Friday Agreement and shit like that kicked off. You just go, this is all, this is all very, very strange. That Belfast doesn't exist anymore. Well, if anybody hasn't seen Divorcing Jack, by the way, find it. You can uh, borrow it from the internet. It's perfectly legal. Um, I've seen Jack. What's it about? Be... I'm not saying what it's about, because it would ruin it. It's, it's about Northern Ireland in the late 90s, pre-peace process. Satirical black comedy. What does set around Jesus. the Northern Irish reporter Dan Starkey. Send it to Demon Hood coming back to seek vengeance on the Hospitallers. Hmm. It seems Not harsh. Sure I've heard mean, of that. I mean, Jack, the the last Grandmaster, that one, cursed everybody. Curses. Oh, yeah, Outlawed Noble. That would make sense. That'd be a nice pair. <laughs> and and you could get the um what's the boring fella called? Orlando Bloom. <laughs> no. Yes. Isn't he team play Legless Legolas? Yes, that's the one. Yes. Cause cause they made War Games Illustrated did a model of him for their Giants in Miniature. So so there you go. You could, you could do the whole thing. That'd be good. Oh, God. Orlando Bloom, the boring guy. I think that's not how it reads on his resume. <laughs> Very much how it reads on his resume. Anybody who's ever seen him act, I'm fairly certain would go, it's the boring guy. I, I, I think I can only recall Legolas and his role in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, it's because your mind automatically shuts down and blanks him from anything else he's been in. <laughs> Has he been in anything else? Yeah, well, he was, he was the hero in Kingdom of Heaven. Was he? Yep. See? Everybody <laughs> remembers Saladin, because he was fucking great. What does it mean to you? Everything. Nothing. Uh, um, not sure if I've seen that one. Oh, if you're going to see Kingdom of Heaven, only watch the director's cut, because the the version they made Ridley Scott put out is balls. No, it's they, one of those again. They made him cut it the fuck down and the story just goes away. Um, but the full story is not bad. Uh, he's in the Calcium Kid. He's in, he's in uh, Carnival Row on Amazon Prime playing a Cockerney detective in fantasy world. Chim Chimney, Mary Parvins. <laughs> Have seen Kingdom Bots? I, there's a lot of Kingdom of Heaven you could skip over, to be fair. You watch it once for the story, and then the rest of the time you watch it for Saladin, because he's great. Uh, he is, though. He's great. Orlando Bloom must have done more than just, like, four films and a TV series, I'm sure. But the mind rebels. Uh, let's see. What does the internet tell me? Orlando oh, Bloom. That internet doesn't even say exists. Even the internet's bored. <laughs> Please remain seated. Your internet credentials will be revoked any minute. Uh, let's see. Orlando. Known as Legolas, 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 Will Turner. <laughs> uh, the Hobbit. Yeah, sure. Why? Oh, that's right. They added him into that, didn't they? Yeah, no with reason. his love interest. That that can't be right. Is that right? Oh, it's a, oh, it's a new film. 
I seen Zulu, and I'm thinking, have I got the right Orlando Bloom here? But apparently they <laughs> did a new film called Zulu, 2013, which I'm assuming is terrible. He's uh, in in something that's called uh, Beastie Boys Make Some Noise music video. <laughs> there you go. And fight for your rights. Sure. Oh, of course he was in fucking Troy as well. Oh, I hated him in Troy so much. Heaven oh, Troy. He got... Black Hawk down. <laughs> he, he got fucking Hulk killed. For fuck's sake. Well... By the 13 Monkey guy. Inspector Barnaby. Yeah, all, all of this... I mean, Ned Kelly. I mean, there's only one Ned Kelly, and we all know that that was... Uh, the lead singer of the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger. <laughs> yeah, so, be, being an actor is sometimes rewarding, and sometimes you get talked about on a small hobby hangout and yeah, shit being terrible. Here. Just he's just a <laughs> he's like a joy sponge sucking all the interest out of the room. Uh, I get a I, I dose of a man. <laughs> 100% Nick I imagine that if, I mean I can't walk down you know Victoria Street without people stop me to tell them what a gobshite he is <laughs> they fall out of the helicopter in Black Hawk Down just that Jesus uh, well you know what it is actually which came first Black Hawk Down or Troy because if he's responsible for killing Eric Banna and Troy maybe Eric pushed him out of the helicopter in Black Hawk Down that would make sense for a bit of Ruwenge. Well, Troy is 2004, Black Hawk Down is 2001. Oh my god, Eric Banner has some sort of precognition. <laughs> well, who knew? Ah, and with that having thought, I think uh, we, we'll just, before we venture into Lloyd yep. territory, mm. go off and call it a day. I have to thank you, Jerry, for, for, for being here. <laughs> Indulging me, and uh, also my coffee's empty, so uh, you lot oh, go outside, and play, paint some miniatures. Oh. Remember to push all the buttons and do the socially bits. Yeah, yeah. Do I'm going to bed. Hi, I Sounds think like a plan. That, that's how it usually works. See you all again next week, and uh, looking forward to uh, Thursday. Perhaps we can uh, then go and watch. Um, the what's his face uh yellow belly tabletop stream oh yeah remember that i was trying to work out where you were going with that one but yeah i'll crop this for next week so that people can see the swear words that are up there because jerry? Uh, what's jerry what the hell is he talking about it doesn't say hell folks it says fuck well i can't see because there's a little of cross. Yeah, there's a terrible thing in the way yeah yeah anyway mm -hmm. goodbye Hashtag, what about leaving for me bye